Is the Golden State Dynasty officially over? Well, on this journey, we're going to take a deep dive into one of the greatest dynasties the NBA has ever seen, and we're going to examine if their recent moves signal the next iteration of the Warriors or the end of one of the greatest dynasties of all time. All right, welcome back to Journey of a Baller Hauler, the best talk show for basketball addicts. I'm your host, General Hannibal Lex. Now, if you're interested in passionate and in-depth analysis on the hottest NBA and college basketball topics, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you tap that notification bell so that you'll be updated every time a new video is uploaded, which is every Monday and Friday at 6 p.m. Now, before we go ahead and get started with the video, go down to the comment section below, and for the comment of the day, let me know where you rank the Warriors amongst the all-time great NBA dynasties. Now, as we know, the Warriors weren't the first dynasty, and they definitely won't be the last. But they are the most unique dynasty we've ever seen. Never have we seen a team win the title and then follow that up with 73 wins the next season before going back to the finals. And as if that wasn't enough, the following season have arguably the best player in the game come and join their team. They then go on to march on to three straight finals and win back-to-back -back titles. We've never seen anything like this. Every great dynasty comes to an end. The Warriors, they're no exception. They've actually come to that fork in the road. The time and place where their legacy, the legacy of their dynasty, is going to be defined by what happens with this upcoming season. After five straight trips to the finals, three titles to show for it, do you think that the Warriors are going to continue their streak of making the finals? Well, listen, before we go to the end of their dynasty, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to before they had those five All-Stars in their starting lineup. Let's go back to when it was just the original three. Steph, Clay, and Draymond. All drafted and homegrown by the Warriors. Now, you had the insane handle, the elite shooting, and the out-of-the-world range that Steph provided. You mix that with Clay and his flamethrower, the ability to give you 37-point quarters, 60 minutes and less than 30 minutes of action. I mean, this guy can just shoot the ball without even dribbling. Then you add on top of that, Draymond Green and his elite defense, his infectious energy, and that ability that he gave Golden State to play small ball. Now, add a couple of vets in there, some solid vets like Andre Iguodala, Andrew Bogut, even Harrison Barnes. What you have is a championship team. The Splash Brothers have become the best shooting backcourt of all time. I mean, Golden State, they, they were just something we had never seen before. These guys look invincible, especially after winning those 73 games. I mean, breaking the Bulls record and all. It just, it just seemed like they would never be stopped. Well, I guess that was until they, you know, blew that 3-1 to lead to LeBron and the Cavs. That's when things changed. That's when it seemed as if what couldn't be beaten was actually beaten. And then it happened. Stephen Curry, who already had Clay as his running mate, received an upgrade of mega proportion. A 6'11 sniper and Kevin Durant comes out and saves the Golden State Warriors day. Listen, you had a new dynamic duo. Golden State, they just seemed like it was a cheat code or something. I mean, they seemed like there was no way anybody was gonna ever dethrone them. And as if that wasn't enough, the Golden State Warriors went out and shook the entire NBA world. When they announced the signing of DeMarcus Cousins to the Golden State Warriors, a guy who had given you 25 and 13, a perennial all-star, an all-NBA player, we're talking about five potential all-stars in the starting lineup with Andre Iguodala still on your bench, who was a finals MVP. What are you supposed to do with that? How are you supposed to beat that team? But then it happened. Golden State started to implode from within. First, it started with Bob Myers after they won their second championship at the parade, telling Kevin Durant that he didn't, he hadn't earned his title. 
Tell him he hadn't earned a max contract. You had the fighting amongst each other, the disrespect, the suspensions that came from that. I mean, listen, the wheels were literally falling off of this dynasty right before us. And as if that wasn't enough, they make it to the playoffs. They even make it to the finals despite all of that. And Kevin Durant tears his Achilles. Then Clay Thompson blows out his ACL. I mean, it couldn't get any worse for Golden State. It literally was like Steph Curry was left all on his own by himself trying to just save the Warriors' dynasty. That was too much for one man. And just like David slew Goliath, Kawhi Leonard, he brought the Golden State Warriors dynasty to its knees. It was of epic proportion. Kawhi wasn't out there on another super team. Kawhi was out there with a borderline all-star Kyle Lowry, an up-and-coming young player in Pascal Siakam, some really good vets, but he didn't have the all-stars and, and the, the experience with this team that Stephen Curry had. He brought the Golden State Warriors dynasty to the ground. So now where do they stand? Okay, let's fast forward to today. They've got new Warriors likely getting out of there. They've got old Warriors that they're shipping out of there. I mean, even their megastar has gone east to form a new big three in Brooklyn. Listen, I'm not saying that the Golden State Warriors are done. I'm not saying they can't ever win a championship again. But if they don't win a title and at least make the finals this year and or next, well, the dynasty that we know as the Golden State Warriors, that could very well be done. Listen, they still have the ability to do it. Let's not forget, they still have their original big three intact. They just added an all-star in D'Angelo Russell. They added an athletic big in Willie Cauley-Stein. They brought back Kevin Looney. So I'm not saying that they can't win a championship. What I'm saying is that with Klay Thompson being out for most of the season with the torn ACL, it's going to rely a lot on Stephen Curry to take his talents to a whole nother level, back to that MVP, that unanimous MVP level. He's going to have to carry so much of the scoring load. Now, he will have D'Angelo Russell to help him, but even Draymond Green is going to have to step his scoring up to where we've never seen it. The West is much deeper. It's much more talented. And not only does he have to worry about that big monster in Brooklyn, there's a sleeping giant that has arisen in his own conference right in L.A. The Los Angeles Lakers are back. So the Golden State Warriors, if they want to continue to continue this dynasty, they have to be able to allow this iteration of the Warriors to have as much success as the last. Now, will that happen? Well, we got to stick around and see. If I had to put my guess on it, I would say that like other dynasties, this one has come to an end. Most dynasties, they end because of health or they end because of finances or whether it's bickering. And it could be a combination of all three with this warrior team. We have to stick around and see how it plays out. But until that time, as always, make sure that you subscribe to the channel, tap that like button, Hit that notification bell so that you can stay updated with the journey of a ball of holiday.